Hello, enthusiasts and end gamers. My name is TB Skyne, and welcome back to Final Fantasy IX, where we are on the final disc of the game, the very last bit before, well, we head into the final dungeons. Um, but before we do any such thing, there's a bunch of stuff that's now available in Gaia, in the normal world, that I should like us to take advantage of. Actually, hang on a sec. For example, let's explore the Invincible. How strange. What is a dagger? I'm riding on the airship that killed both of my mothers and destroyed my birthplace. I'm sorry. You probably don't want to ride on this airship. Don't worry about it. Kuja and Garland were the ones who chose to destroy, not the ship. And I want to stop blaming my sorrow on other things. Dagger. You must end this once and for all. There must be mist monsters everywhere. We need to be careful. Yeah, this is going to talk to Steiner. I thought of relinquishing my knighthood uh, many times after Alexandria was destroyed. But there are still things I must protect. Seeing this sky convinced me. Let's see. There are some things lying around on this ship. I think there's a Stellatio here somewhere. And finishing the Stellatio quest is one of the things that are, uh, we can do now. And I think I've missed a couple lying around somewhere, so I'll have to go back and find them if I can't. But, you know. I can't believe I'm still traveling around with you. I never imagined a reunion in Lindblom was bring us this far. I shall see through this battle to the end. Let's see. This light make me feel like I become pot roast. The light that came out of here burnt me. I'm sorry. Speaking of Medai and Sari, we're gonna go back there. Let's see, is that all? Uh, that's all. Cool. Got the Pisces, then. We'll go back to Medai and Sari and get some scenes at one point. But for the moment... <laughs> just want to go grab Choco. Ah, and liven the music up a little bit. Good lord. And back to the dower music. And then to the black mage music. Yay! What a strange tribe. It seems like they live in hiding. I'm asking him about the genome world. So a number of the shops that are accessible have had their inventories updated, so let's see. He needs a name now that he's one of us. How about number 777? These people are trying to call me a funny name. I'll give him a name. How about number 333? Let's see. Uh... Oh, right. The Sargantus and... There's the Masa Moon. And the Dual Claws. Dang, I need those. All right, the Grand Armor. I don't want to synthesize that because I can steal it later. And I've got two Light Robes. That's enough. Same thing with the Grand Helm. I can steal that later. See, the thing about synthesis right now is that there's, there's, um, there is a special synthesis that we will encounter who has the absolute best things in the game. So I need to be damn sure that I'm not accidentally synthesizing anything here with items that I can't get a hold of again. Ba, 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 ba. I realized one thing after listening to her stories. Why do you think the genomes and we have so many things in common? I don't know. Why? 
We were manufactured in Alexandria, but that technology wasn't developed by Alexandria. Kuja knew how genomes were made. He manufactured us based on that knowledge. If Kuja is also a genome, I wonder how he felt when he manufactured us. I ran away once because I was afraid of dying, but I came back because this village is my favorite place. This is where you bury the dead. What is the point of this? It isn't like the dead would appreciate it. You're right, but I don't think we build cemeteries for the dead. Sure, it may seem pointless to you, but... How can I describe it? It's so that we can think like this. We'll never forget you. We'll remember you every time we stand at your grave. And we won't let the fear of death, which each of us knows, stop us from living our lives. Because my friends will remember me when I'm here. I'll never forget my friend, Mr. 36. And again, Notice the whole coping with death and dealing with it and moving on and accepting grief thing? Yeah. I'm supposed to be assisting in the operation of this shop. What do I do? Water flowing. Time flowing. Things don't stay the same. I don't understand. I think the language of music is universal, don't you agree? Why do people of Gaia pay special attention to communication through sound? I guess the people of Gaia decide when to rest based on the presence of light. There's always light in Terra. The same method wouldn't apply there. It's obviously an imperfect life form, but I feel a strange affinity to it. Now you don't have any mail or anything, right? Good. Everyone is back. We have new friends. Bobby Corwin is here. So many great things happened all at once. <laughs> Bobby Corwin. <laughs> Will we have more chocobos when Bobby Corwin lays eggs? I see. So you enclose a captured life form and conduct research here. You know someone else who never accepted death? Like, who never accepted that there might be an ending to them? The people of Terra. Hence, all this nonsense about, like, creating genomes and parasitizing other worlds. Like, all of that is... Oh, no, wait, I need Choco. All of that, too, is like an attempt to deny... ...death. Like, to deny that there could be an ending to them. So there's a new dive spot that only appears on disc 4. I'm just going to need a beach so I can run into the water. There it is. Ten Aquamarines, one Ultima weapon, one Maximilian, one Invincible card, and that card immediately gets thrown out. There we go. Invisible dive spot, but that's where Sudan's ultimate weapon is. I can't remember how you're supposed to actually know that in the game, like how, what, what clues you're supposed to find. But that's the one. There it is. Now, let's go deliver Kupo Nuts. There we go. Even more kids! Yes, there you go. <laughs> and we get an Aloha t-shirt for it. The most useless gear in the game. And I think that's all of them. I think that's the end of Kuponut delivery. And he gets to have three kids. Because of all the Viagra we brought him. <laughs> right then. Uh, let's head to Alexandria now. where a side quest is going to pay off for us. 
Guess who's back where he started? I tried to figure out what Artemision was doing, but I didn't understand how he felt. You want to buy a set of Moonstone, Ruby, and Elixir for 5,555 kill? Yes, I do. Thanks, buddy. I'll sell you stu more stuff again where I get some more. Oh, I wanted to do something for you because you always buy stuff from me. Ribbon. And that's the reward for that damn side quest. A ribbon. Hooray! Which is a lovely thing to have because it has that triple... Uh, I think we're getting close to solving the mystery of Magnet, Kabo. I want to deliver a letter to Atla. Okay. Thanks, Kabo. So, now we begin another side quest in the game, which is the Magnet side quest. So, you may remember how, with all the mail delivery we've been doing, Moogles have been complaining that Magnet isn't working properly, and Artemision, who's supposed to be the, the main delivery Moogle, hasn't really been coming around properly recently. Oh god, I landed on the wrong side of the screen city eh hasn't been coming around recently and wondering what's going on with magnet well we're gonna help find out but first we go to treno so i can check what i have missed i'm sure i've missed at least once the lazio somewhere which i'm gonna have to go find all right Let's see. Petrify. There's also a behemoth down here. <laughs> Which, normally, very tough fight. Like, a pretty tough monster, especially when you only have one character to fight it with. But the same trick that's worked before, ouch, is gonna work again. There we go. <laughs> Circlet. Lovely. La 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 la. Oh, we should probably read the uh The Aquarius and Pisces. Pisces said to Aquarius, Virgo made her choice. Go see him and he'll tell you the rest. Aquarius arrived late. He asked everyone. Who kissed Virgo? Yeah, I'm missing one. Two, maybe? A set a ring, that's lovely. Yeah, 11. I'm missing one. God damn it. Okay. Which one am I missing? Yes. Uh, it's the one in Lindblom. Sagittarius. Ugh. Sagittarius dashed through the night, defying the chilly northern wind that was stinging his right cheek. Okay, that's 12. Then there's a 13th, and we're gonna finish that because we need it in order to get a thing. A very important thing, incredibly important, like you won't even believe how huge of a difference this makes to the ending of the entire game. It just, it completely changes everything. So it's definitely a good thing that we're prioritizing and spending a bunch of time trying to get all the slots here, because like without it, just, like, this just wouldn't even be a point finishing the game, honestly. <laughs> Okay, lady, I've got the twelfth one. Which leaves just one. Something is missing. According to my information, there are thirteen Stellatio. Well, because there's... Then why do I feel I am missing one? because there is one more. Yes, there must be a 13th Stellatio somewhere. 
My queen, if I may, the writings on the Stellatio must be the key to solving the mystery. Well, fine. I'll give you all my Stellatio, and you bring me the 13th. So, what you're supposed to do here is you read the story on all of the Stellatios. The story of the 12 Zodiacs. The 11 Zodiacs pondered how best to catch Virgo's heart. Ares headed east. Taurus had an idea. He would give Virgo a gift. Through the forest and over the mountain, he found a star. Gemini thought by the river, I'll sing her a song. He didn't know where she was, but he hoped his song would reach her. Cancer headed to the cape where Virgo waited. The sun was setting into the ocean. Would he finally see her? Leo was waiting for the sun to set into the ocean. Then Cancer showed up and they began to fight. Into the ocean they fell. Watching the sunset from the cape, Virgo whispered, My only wish is to be with you now. Libra was a perverse fellow. He would always walk in the opposite direction of the sun. Would he ever see Virgo? Scorpio was very timid. He always looked at his shadow, until one day he decided to look away. He walked up a hill. Sagittarius dashed through the night, defying the chilly northern wind that was sticking his right cheek. Impatient Capricorn ran up a hill towards the sun and fell asleep from exhaustion. Aquarius arrived late. He asked everyone, Who kissed Virgo? Virgo made her choice. Go see him and he'll tell you the rest. Now, I don't know how you're supposed to parse that out into... Like, finding the... 13th Stellatio, I just happen to know, already know where it is, and its location is a clue to whom it is that Virgo chooses. Fortunately, it is not far away. The final Stellatio is here, in Quan's dwelling. Huh? There's something under where the Scorpio used to be. Did the Scorpio and the Virgo just sparkle in my hands? Ophiochus. Their future was uncertain, but Scorpio and Virgo kissed in the light of dusk. That moment meant everything. By Ophiochus. By Ophiochus? Ophiochus. Something. I don't know how to pronounce that. For some reason. Found it! Oh, you found the last Stellatio. Ophiochus. Give it to me along with the rest of the Stellatio I loaned you. Hammer. So the hammer <laughs> is an utterly unimportant item, except, well, mm, uh, Sinna's hammer. It's a weapon, but nobody on your team can equip it because it's Sinna's hammer. However, it can be used to do two things. It can either be used for synthesis to synthesize some truly powerful armor near the end of the game, or you can keep it in your inventory, and then the ending changes. A little bit. Like, I was heavily excited. It changes a little bit. Like, there's one little tiny thing that happens in the ending that wouldn't happen otherwise. But, you know, it's it's one of those things. The rewards for the Stellatio quest are good, so there's really no point not doing it. Now then, since we have completed the last dive spot, we can now go to Chocobo's Paradise again. Because we finished collecting all the treasures, and that will let us start a new side quest that we're not going to complete because it's tremendously tedious. Um, but the thing we can do <laughs> if we want to. Never mind, I don't care. Okay, I'll just explain what it is without actually getting the quest. It doesn't matter. The quest itself is the Chocobo Beach quest, I think it's called, something along those lines. And what it involves is that you have to take your Chocobo to every single beach in the entire overworld map, all of them, and press circle on each of those beaches, and you'll hear a little chime go cling, and then once you do that, and you go to all of the beaches, then you can go to any beach in the world and press circle, and it will fully recover your health and mana. It's, ba it's just free healing. It's an, a very weird, like, you can only do it on disc four. Like, it's a complete end of the game quest that gives you a reward that by the end of the game, you're not really gonna need that much. Uh, so it's a weird thing, but it's one of those little Easter egg completionist things that you can do if you are a complete lunatic. I'm not gonna be a complete lunatic this time around, because good lord, that would take way too long. Anyway, Matt, I'm sorry, where are you at? The 
just covered up the sky. It makes me feel so sad. Come on. Let's see. The fishing has been horrible since the mist appeared. Guess who? That was Lonnie. Okay, that's step one. Just have to see her, I think. And now... Now, without dagger... What are you doing here? I tried getting back to the Mist Continent, but Fossil Ru was blocked, and the Alexandrian fleet was destroyed before my eyes. I became so weak after wandering around for, for days. Then the Mughals here rescued me. That's when I realized I've been so selfish all my life. It's so wonderful living with Mughals. I haven't thought about money once since I've been here. I'm glad I lost that last fight. You know, I saw some words that might mean something in the small room over there. She said she saw some words. There we go. There's something carved on it. Time moves forward once. Time moves backward once. Nine is the last number. It's also the first. <clears throat> Moving a time? If it's talking about a clock, forward is clockwise and backward is anti-clockwise. Right. We need to go clockwise first. And then you hear the little chime, and then you go counterclockwise. And then you go clockwise. And then you go counterclockwise. And we do this nine times, like the text says. HP and MP restored, status effects removed. That's not the whole of it, though. Fear not the power of summon magic, but those the ones who use it. Greed and instability endlessly repeat old mistakes. Will omniscience set us free? This is where the fault lines collide. Listen to the planet's heartbeat. Breathe slowly and calm your mind. Let memories return to you. Memories shape time. Time overlaps. The overlap becomes our memory. Memories construct time. History repeats itself. We must stand in its flow and understand the world. Such is the goal of our tribe. Let's see, we need to examine all of the paintings. The Legend of Eidolons. We discovered Eidolons by researching legends documented from around the world. The one, the Thunder God Ramu is one of those legends. Some theorize that the Eidolons were created from the legends and not the other way around. The first Eidolon discovered Shiva. Shiva took the form of a young girl when she was first discovered. She now appears as a grown woman. Eidolons adapt their forms to the time and culture in which they appear. Shiva illustrates this theory. In certain areas, Shiva is depicted as a snow fairy. This cannot be verified since the only written document that remains is in the summoner's village. People associate Shiva with a snow fairy. Why she changes forms remains a mystery. See what that is, huh? When the arrogant one summoned a power that could not be controlled, holy judgment was passed. The jewel of this village must serve as a reminder of the day we had to leave our country. Not yet. We repeated the mistake our ancestors made 500 years ago. We failed an attempt to summon at the foot of the Aoife tree. The area surrounding the tree was unaffected, but we sealed the area as they would have done 500 years ago. Aiko, my lovely child, until you turn 16 and have your own Eidolon to control, stay in this village. Then build strong friendships with others. I wish for your happiness from far away. Aiko, you are a treasure born to a dying village. We are dying, and there's little we can do for you. We shall return to the stars with one wish in mind. If legends are not born out of Eidolons, but Eidolons are born out of legends, then let us leave this place with one wish. 
If it can, we can give birth to a legend, it shall create an idol and as a friend and protector of humans. Mog. This information is yet to be confirmed, but there was an eyewitness account of a previously undiscovered Eidolon. It was witnessed in Estogaza. If there is an Eidolon that can exist outside of our legends, our theory would no longer hold true. But maybe there are other tribes that have theories of legends of their own. Good. That's almost all of them. Now, Ifrit, hello. I survived the storm. I wonder if you two are okay. I see the two of you smile every time I close my eyes. I imagine I see you when I open my eyes. I have a mortal wound. I won't be able to wait for you for very long. I regret being so unemotional for all these years. I'm writing everything down here in the hope that you'll read it someday. To my dearest wife, Jane. Although we fought many times, and I may not have shown my affection enough, I love you very much. To my beloved daughter, Sarah. My life changed when you were born. You made me happy. These are the things I want you to know. But yeah, that's a message from Garnet's true father. With the name of Garnet's mother, Jane. And her true name, Sarah. A little bit of lore that's extremely easy to miss. Especially since it's hidden behind such a silly thing as walking clockwise and counterclockwise. You can't examine the Ifrit painting until you have done all those weird-ass steps. So here's another side quest that we're not going to do, <laughs> but I'm going to show it to you. So, they're gone. Where did they go? There's Sina and Marcus. Let's go look. Yeah. That is the beginning of the Nero Brothers quest, which, oh God, okay. So the Nero Brothers quest was is a strange side quest in Final Fantasy IX because it was only discovered about, I think, something like 10 years after the game came out. Someone realized that this was actually a side quest that you can complete. And the way that it works... <laughs> fucking hell. The way that it works is that it's tied to your progress through the final dungeon of the game. So... As you go through the dungeon, there's little mini events that'll happen, like where characters talk and little things happen. And each of those constitute a checkpoint in this quest. So if you go to the final dungeon, see one of those events, then go back all the way back to Lindblom and go to the hideout, the quest will progress. So you get another scene in the quest, like with the Cenero, Benero, uh, the Nero brothers trying to find Marcus and Cenero. And the thing is, like, you have to do it nine times. Nine times you have to do it. Go to the final dungeon, then go all the way back to Lindblom, and go to the Tantalus hideout to see one step of the scenes for that thing. And then you have to go back to the final dungeon, and then back to Lindblom, and back to the final dungeon, and back to Lindblom. So we're not doing that, because I mean, I did the Kupo nuts, but no, we're not doing that. No, I refuse. I absolutely refuse Gilligan cut to me doing it anyway, but no. <laughs> We're not doing that, but I just want to let you know that it's there. The reward for completing it is a protect ring, which is a nice accessory, but not, like, game-changing. You can get other protect rings if you need them. In fact, I believe I have one already. Okay. I think the only thing that's left now is the magical fingertip side quest. And to start that, we need to head to Daguero. Came to see me again. Guess I can't blame you, me being famous and all. Let's see, your treasure hunter rank is... No way, you're rank S? Hey, cool, I made it. P pardon me for my rudeness. What's with that guy? I managed to get to rank S in treasure hunting. Hey, I'm sorry for talking big earlier. To be honest, I'm not famous or anything. I'm just a loser d rank treasure hunter. But someday I'm gonna be your rank S treasure hunter like yourself. I just want to become stronger, you know, so no one will push me around and call me forearms anymore. Take care. Oh yeah, I haven't told you my name yet. My name's Gilgamesh. I'm gonna be famous one day, so don't you forget it. Take care. 
And that's Gilgamesh, a character who... If I'd played Final Fantasy IV or V before we did this one... Well, V more than IV, really. Then you would know Gilgamesh already. Uh, but since we haven't, you don't. <laughs> he appeared to be quite a traveler. I can tell. If you have a fun item called the Magical Fingertip, could you please bring it to me? Consider it a dying man's last wish. I'll give you something in return. Indeed he will. Something I quite want, too. Okay, hopefully... It'll show up right away. Griffin's heart. Fairy earrings. Magical fingertip. Excellent. So, we started the bidding here at 30,000. Which people will definitely match. Motherfucker. Don't. Sit your asses down. Don't you dare. Fuck you! Oh, this is so expensive. Eh. Right, the ribbon. We're not gonna bother with the ribbon. We have three already, that's plenty. So the magical fingertip only appears in the auction house if you have already bought the Griffin's Heart, Unis Mira, Doga's Artifact, and the, uh, the, the Rat Tail, and sold them on to various nobles around the city. So you have to do that first. Then the magical fingertip will appear in the auction house, and then you can buy it, and it's like, you pay at least 40,000 gil for it, pretty much. Sometimes a lot more, as you saw. Uh, but the reward you get is pretty good. Not the best reward in the game, but pretty good. So, before we turn it over, let's look at the item description. No one knows who this Goko -Go guy is. He just disappeared. Does he really exist or what? Lady Banded Ruby. Gogo -Go is another reference to old Final Fantasy games. Gogo uh, -Go is a mimic who appears in Final Fantasy 4, 5, and 6. You may remember him from Final, our Final Fantasy 6 playthrough. Huh? You, you have the magical fingertip. Will you give it to me? I beg you. Oh, thank you. What's wrong? I used to be a fairly well-known blacksmith. My work was everything to me. And then one day my wife died. That's when I moved here. I've lived here ever since. A few years ago, I read a biography of a great craftsman named Gogo, who was known for making dolls that looked like real people. Supposedly, the secret to his extraordinary skill was in his fingers. So I figured if I could get his fingers and combine them with my skills, I could make a doll that looked like my wife. I'm such a fool. Look at these fingers. They look worn down, as if they never got a break. They look just like my fingers. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I now realize that I must accept who I am and how I have lived my life. Please accept this as a token of my gratitude. I no longer need it. Excalibur. Not Steiner's best sword, but one of his best swords. You see, the Ragnarok I've got here is more powerful. Um, but it does teach Climb Hazard, which is a pretty damn good thing. I just need to get through the Rune Blade and the Defender and the Ultimate Sword and Excalibur before I can get there. Uh, Steiner needs a lot of training. But you see again that thing about coming to terms with loss. It's everywhere in this game. Like, it's everywhere in it. Even in the ridiculous little side quests where you have to do a bunch of auction house trading and stuff, that, that central theme still runs through the game and informs the way that it writes its characters. The last thing, then, we will do in this episode is we will do the Mognet quest. For which I will need a guide, uh, to just to help me out for a sec. Right, Burmesia, that's where we're going, to Atla. There we are. A letter from Kupo? I wonder what it could be, Kupo? I heard we haven't received any mail lately because the machine in Magnet Central broke down, Kupo. It's supposedly a complicated machine. They're missing something that makes the machine run smoothly, Kupo. I wonder if it'll get- I'll start getting mail again when the machine gets fixed, Kupo. I'll give you this in exchange for delivery. Oh god, that's right, they give you- oh god. They all give you Kupo nuts! No! <laughs> oh god, that's right, all of the Mognet quests give you 
let us give you Koopo nuts. I don't want it. How many kids does one Moogle need? Fine, you can have more. You can have more Koopo nuts. Fine. You better make your wife real happy, you hear me? We haven't been receiving mail because the machine in MockNet Central broke down. I wonder how we can fix it, Kapo. Do you think there's a special item that'll fix the machine? A special item? Maybe it's... I'll give you this in exchange for delivery. Fuck you! Okay. Okay. Yes, I have a coupon. Uh, he's, he doesn't give me any items that are worth any of this trouble, but I do it anyway because I've... Like Macbeth, I am steeped so far in blood that to go to go back would be more tedious than to wait over or something along those lines. I heard that the machine in Lockdown Central broke down. It's because they're missing that item. I wonder where you can find one. It's a rare item, so I don't think you'll find it very easily. That item? Oh! I'll give you this in exchange for delivery. Yes, I'll deliver a letter to Moise for you. Here you go. Ah. There he is. Have a letter. I understand, Couple. Mocknet will function again once we have some. I think boys would know. Couple, where's that item? We need to, to repair Mocknet. They gotta tell me more than that item, Kapo! Now we need to go find Noggy. Okay, there we go. I think Magnet can go back to standard operation if we get the right item. If you ask me, I think the item we're, they're looking for is that thing. You know what I mean, right? It's that thing. That thing. Oh, I know. Come on. Okay. We've made the circuit. Oh, hello. I didn't realize the jump rope game would be back. We're not gonna do it, though. Well, hmm, well, no. Play more and raise your rank. Oh, right. She's a card. I know what's needed to run the machine in Magnet Central. It's super slick. I heard a rumor about it. The rumor said that someone in Alexandria has it. That's what I heard. Kabul, find it and send it to Central right away. Ah, huh, super slick, Kabul. But I don't know who has any. I'll give you this in exchange for the Larry fucking coupon nuts. Fortunately, I know who in Alexandria has it. Well, fry my heart, how'd you know I use this here super slick in my hair? You want to try some? How come you be needing it? You want to be beautiful like me? You're pulling my leg, aren't you? And again, apologies to the entire American South. No? Well, I get my folks to send some more. You can have this one. Ain't gonna give it to some girl as a gift, are you? I emphatically am not. Okay. Now, we need to go and find Magnet Central. Fortunately, I believe I know where it is. I think, I hope so, anyway. Okay, now, Chocobo. Are there any Chocobo tracks near Mad Sari? No. Oh, yes, there. To this island here. We ne you need at least a mountain Chocobo to get to Magnet Central. Uh, so you have to have completed Chocobo quests along the way. Oh, I could have also flown, okay. See, there's a mountain crack here somewhere. There. And listen to the music.
That is the Moogle music, which has stuck with the Moogles at least since Final Fantasy VI, I think maybe since Final Fantasy V. So again, that's a massive throwback. I wonder if Magnet will go out of business. The grown-up Moogles don't know what to do because the equipment is broken. This is Magnet Central. I wonder if Magnet will ever be the same. If only we had that item. Hey, you brought some super slack. Will you give it to me? Sure. Thanks. With his oil. Thanks. I'll give you this in return. A uh, protect ring. I was happy because my coat became so soft, but I took everyone's fun away. I'm sorry. Everything's okay now. Magnet can resume operation again, Kabo. Thanks for delivering 27 letters. Hey, starting up again. The grown up Moogles are busy with work. And Magnet Central works again. <laughs> And that's the Magnet Central side quest. A Protect Ring is all you get for it, but that's still a nice little reward. And that, I believe, marks the end of everything that you can do before you start to set off towards the final dungeon and the final confrontation with Kuja. Whew! No, wait, actually, there's one more thing. Oh no, there's one more thing. I forgot about that. We'll give it a shot, but I may be too low level to actually do it. We'll give it a shot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go complete Queena's frog catching, which should be fairly easy for us, all things considered. Should only take one. You're working hard, Queena. Now the time, Queena. You on your own from now on. You're trying to become ultimate gourmand alone. Master Quail, before you go, you take final test. So Master Quail here is level 76, I believe. Which, you know, that's a problem. Because uh, he's quite powerful. Fortunately, most of his abilities aren't that dangerous because I've equipped appropriate countermeasures. Where's Magic Hammer? There it is. And what I'm going to be doing for a strategy is I'm going to try and get all of his mana away from him. Just like all of it. And also get slow on him. Because once all his mana is gone, most of his most dangerous attacks are going to be sealed. The downside is that he's going to start using only his physical attack, which is still pretty powerful, but it'll only ever hit one person. What I want to prevent is him using all the powerful blue magic that he has, and he has quite a lot of it. So far, he's been treating me very nicely. Okay, fine. Just focus then, Vivi. He also has like 65... Oh, God. 65,000 health. Now, that thing doesn't always hit, but when it does, it hurts. And I want to get him to zero mana as fast as humanly possible. There we go. Finally slowed him. Ugh. 
and he can be like he can be a complete murder. Like I've, I've put everyone in the back row because once his mana is gone, he's gonna only be using physical attacks, and I need those physical attacks to do half damage. Oh, that one's gonna hurt too. Yeah, I can't take two of those. Really should have kept Ico on... Just purely on healing, rather than try and do damage, but oh well. Please take away his mana! Please! Oh, he's done being slowed. Okay, good. Great. Lovely. Take away his magic! Please! Okay, that should do it. No? Oh, okay. The magic hammer does random ma damage to an enemy's MP. Ooh, I should have Sedan Steel, actually, come to think of it. But yeah, if you don't have... Like, if you don't guard against, like, all status changes, then you are in this battle completely screwed. Oh, come on! There we go, Robe of Lords. That's the one I really wanted from him. That's the important one. He's got a couple of other good things as well, but the Robe of Lords is the big one. Ah, there we go, Rolling Attack. Does that mean he's out of mana? I really bloody hope it does. Yes, thank God. Okay. Whew. Okay, just a matter of dealing enough damage now. Since he can't hurt me anymore, except with, with rolling attack. Yeah, there we go. Oh god, the protect statuses are coming off. Just need to hurt him. Hurt him, hurt him. <gasps> Got him? Yeah! I have no more to teach you. I give you this. That's Queena's ultimate weapon. Oh, thank you, Master Quail. I train more. Just gonna capture a few more frogs. There we go. That should do. You don't get any more rewards uh, for catching frogs, but it does power up frog drop even more. And there we go. Legendary fork known for its ability to crush anything. Not that having the best weapon for Queena makes them any more powerful in terms like their damage is still completely freaking random. Cool, we managed to beat Master Quail. I wasn't 100% sure I could do it, but with enough status immunities, it became possible. Because I've tried to fight him before, where he pretty much just like, once he did his rolling attack or hit me with a water, uh, it just insta-killed weaker characters, making it kind of impossible to beat him. That was nice. Got a little bit of a challenge out of that. And so we call this episode to a close. We're done now. We're done with everything on Gaia at this point. Whew. Which means for the next couple of episodes, we can focus on finishing the game. It'll still take a little while, uh, but uh, we'll at least be able to get there. So if you want to see how that all shakes out, then I highly encourage you to like, comment, and or subscribe, especially the subscription bit, because uh, with the bell icon and the stuff, because that makes numbers go up on my channel, and it also makes the YouTube thing I'll notify you when videos happen, so you can watch them, which is what you want, I hope. Um, 
Right, I also have a Patreon, a merchandise store, and a tip jar. If you want to support me more directly, then using any of those is a great help. And if you don't want to, that's completely fine as well. Memberships are also available on this channel for a dollar a month if you have a little bit of pocket change you don't mind parting with. And if not, that's completely okay. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to wash your hands and have solidarity with those who are still fighting to make the world a better place.